Part forward slash tales from me server. Episode 2. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. As many of you noticed over the weekend, the sub was set to private due to a post on here which posted a user's Twitch stream and the thread on r forward slash tfys both called for brigading his Twitch stream forward slash reddit profile and called for physical harm to both him and his family. And I'm hashtag xb. I created this sub way back in 2012 as r servers anonymous of sorts as a way to both connect to other servers and to vent about shitty customers the fact that this community decided it was a good idea to encourage action against someone else and their family is reprehensible and you should all be ashamed of yourselves if it wasn't against the community guidelines before it is now but it sure as hell is part of ready cat https forward slash forward slash www.reddit.com forward slash wiki forward slash ready cat and am hashtag xb i can't count how many messages i went through this weekend that said i saw the post but i didn't participate <laughs> let me back in which was weird because the post itself had one one report on it and only a few if any of the comments which called for actual physical harm to the user in question had more than two reports on it. 2. Not taking any action when you see something that is wrong. You might as well have just participated because it's just as bad I know. Hopefully you never in a situation where someone threatens actual physical harm against you and your loved ones. And somebody just stands idly by. And am hashtag xb. And am hashtag xb. The worst part is that you all got duped by someone who didn't even have the balls to use a real account. Op used a throwaway that was three days old. Now five, but I get it. You all were, finally, able to give that tongue lashing to a customer that tipped like sheet on purpose. Maybe the streamer just told a story. Maybe Op of the thread is a competitor of his on Twitch. And he's trying to ruin his channel. And I'm hashtag XB. This sub is forward slash was a hobby of mine back when I started it, and I came back just to help out when it was needed. I have no qualms about just making the sub private next time and leaving it that way. And am hashtag xb. For shame servers. For shame. The table went out of their way to be kind while I was crashing, and they've never forgotten them. This is a story about a table whose conscientious decision to be kind has stuck with me. Years ago. I was working a basic dinner rush. I was pretty experienced at this point and only had six to seven tables. But that didn't stop me from experiencing a serving mare crush that would stick with me for years. Thankfully, it wasn't the jerks that made this memorable, but a family that noticed how upset I was, and successfully helped me out, just by being themselves. I had just reached full crush mode. Do you know the feeling? This crush was caused mostly by one table's multiple and unique dietary restrictions that were compounded with preferences, and delivered by a Karen-type mom. He can't have gluten, I can't have soy or seafood, no dairy for my husband. These are all deadly allergies, but I also don't like onions, and he won't eat it if it has cilantro. My mom is vegan, but again, no cilantro. Put the pickles on the side because he'll eat them carrot sticks instead of fries for my brother. So, dealing with this table meant I was neglecting some of the others. Just as I was about to get the other tables caught up because table 31 got their food, Karen mom flagged me down. Of course because literally everything on this eight top was modified. The kitchen got some things wrong. Not kitchen's fault. The entire order was a mess. I had already included the managers, who thought Karen mom was insane. Anyway, Karen mom was furious, said I was incompetent and demanded I got her my manager. Note, manager was on my side in this. My section was close together, all of the tables could see Karen mom freaking out about something, telling my manager how awful I was right in front of me. I turned to another table who then decided to tell me they didn't like being neglected, even though they understood how awful that other table was, they heard the whole thing from order to freak out. I was so frustrated, upset with myself for crashing, and feeling so overwhelmed. It never been called incompetent before and it stung. The tear was falling down my cheek, and my chin was trembling. 
I brushed it off and turned to greet a table of five that had been sitting there for who knows how long. I said the usual greeting, trying to push my way through. My voice cracked. My chin trembled. This table knew what was going on. They had a front row seat to the Karen freakout. The dad greeted me with a very cheerful, Hi there. My chin trembled as I tried to smile. I took a breath, and my eyes started to water as I looked at him, unable to speak. He then asked each of his family members how they were. They each took his lead, and copied his extreme cheeriness, and gave a bit about what they liked about their day so far. He basically saved me from having to talk, and gave me the time I needed to get my chin tremble under control. They joked with each other, and made me laugh. Their happiness and charisma washed over me. Standing at that table was like standing in the summer sun. He knew I was about to crack, and I think his family did too. They used what they had each other and their happy, charismatic and funny family to modify the atmosphere. I recovered from the crash, and saved each table except for 31 because fuck table 31. A lady asked for a blue rare steak and sent it back because it was too cold. I have no words. Don't quit with a no call no show. Sorry mini rant but a girl quit on hot schedules. Didn't realize you could do that. Figured you'd need to speak to a manager or something at least. Right before her shift on father's day. Essentially making her a no call no show. Even if you hate management or hate your job. Please think about your co-workers. You have to be a special type of asshole to do that to people. Ever had a shift so bad you didn't want to show up the next day? That's me right now. Father's day was an absolute disaster for me. It started off really good. Everyone was being super generous with tips. However, it didn't make up for the hell that was about to come. Everyone got weeded and wait times became longer than usual. A particular regular decided to show up with his family and I had no reason to believe anything was wrong. Until the food came. Kitchen messed up. But I was ultimately blamed for not paying close enough attention. Regular apparently became so angry that he came stomping through the server station leading to the kitchen holding his plate. Meanwhile I stop and ask him what's wrong. When he completely ignores me. I can see in his demeanor he's about to become aggressive. And I walk into the kitchen looking for someone to help. He slams the door open and. Walks into the kitchen. Demanding to speak to the owner who isn't there. This leads to him yelling. About me. To my coworker while I'm standing. Right there. Like my dude. Just tell me what's wrong and he'll fix it. This leads to him acting like I gave terrible service to my coworker. Because why wouldn't you exaggerate and lie when given the opportunity? During this whole debacle, I forget to run drinks for another table that I had put in right before this happened. The guy at that table was drunk and made a huge scene about it, embarrassing the others at his table. I bought them around to make up for it and just got ridiculed by him further when I tried dropping them off. I don't react well when confronted by aggressive men due to personal experiences, and after all this I couldn't think straight and I kept fucking up small things, including spilling an entire beer on myself. It pretty much all stemmed from that first encounter, and from that point on I just looked incompetent to my company workers, which I know is what they thought, since I overheard that coworker who ended up in the middle of the first issue talking about me to anyone and everyone she could, making it a point to not stop when I walked by, because that's just how she is, the type of girl who thinks being loud is a personality trait. I pulled myself together and got through the rest of my shift, but I don't want to go back. I know my sections will suffer, therefore my money will as well and he'll have to deal with tension since I'm sure my incompetency has been the talk of the restaurant the past day. I needed to vent. I'm glad this sub is back up. I've had bad days before, but nothing that has made me seriously consider quitting before my next shift. Girl at work has room, sir. Company doesn't care. I'm the new girl on day three training to put into perspective it's a more upscale place and really good money so I don't want to get fired for saying something at what to do about this but this is what happened last night. So I asked girl are you okay you look like you don't feel good. She told me she isn't feeling good and needs to go to doctor and then proceeded to tell me her symptoms and pulled up her shirt and peeled back her bandage and had this huge hole. She said pus was coming out and she pushed it all out into a napkin. 
before her freaking shift. I am literally on my third shift there last night as she is telling me. I didn't know what it was and I asked her how do you get something like that? She said by breathing near someone or touching someone. I said what so it's contagious? And she said yeah. I left shortly after and now I'm freaking out after googling WTF it is. I'm a server she served so many people yesterday on Father's Day she had 3000 in sales. WTF do I do? My friend said she would call and give an anonymous tip about it. The girl kept saying she was skipping her antibiotics the day prior and now I am putting everything together. Advice please. Also she said do my hands look purple? I said yes um you need to go to the hospital. She looks like a walking zombie and I am completely freaked out because I touched the same computer she was touching all night and I touch my face a lot. I am terrified. I showered like a crackhead but I am afraid. Another edit. She said she should go to a... But why? Since she already has antibiotics. It's just weird. Somebody guide me. Am I going to die? Sarcasm to help my anxiety. And also what should I do? Have friend call or say something myself. I really 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 need and want this job. I'm not working. Weirdest thing happened. I get to my job early almost every day because I have a thing about being late. I work at a very casual bar so my work clothes are just casual everyday clothing. So there is nothing to establish that I work there. I sit down and start eating my dinner because I'm 45 minutes early. I'm sitting at the bar eating and drinking a soda. The man whom I've never seen before walks up and asks me about off sale. We do off sale so I just assume he's asking anyone before he bothers the bartender. So I tell him yes this establishment does off sale. He stands next to me for what I assume is waiting for the bartender. My coworker who is behind the bar asks him what he wants and he says I placed my order with her. We both gave a startled look and informed him I wasn't working. I'm still confused on why he thought I was working when I was sitting at the bar eating. Also, he never gave me any order. I'm honestly just confused at the whole interaction. Phone booking apps. So mini rant here. Obligatory I'm on mobile. English is my first language but I'm prone to typos minus sorry. Yoda yoda. So I work in a pub. It's non-branded but owned by a brand which is owned by a bigger chain company. And through this we have a chain app. Not a lot of people know about the app which we are really thankful for because it's a pain in the bum because of all the issues with it. Expired offers showing up. Limited time offers and people not reading the terms and conditions. But the biggest issue is the mobile booking, because people will either 1. Book a table when they can't get a seat inside minus so when it's busy and they can't get a seat they will book a table and if there's no bookings for the time the system will automatically accept it and then we have to tell them no as we will not kick someone off the table for them. This is also a problem as they will do it 5 minutes before they come in and sometimes we don't have a chance to check the inbox during a shift minus we only have one laptop and it's usually in the kitchen with the manager right now as we just lost a chef minus C4. 2. Continue trying to book a certain table after evening told they can't have it in person which then gets awkward. 3. Book 3 people onto a table for 6 or 8 because they think it's got a good view of the TV which causes my boss to switch round the tables, so they get the numbered table they want but not the large table. 4. Final issue. We have just lost a chef so to compensate the GM and Agma doing kitchen shifts but this means that they will do a shift in the kitchen and then close the pub so we have been closing the kitchen at 8 instead of 9. We don't lose a lot of business and it means they can get on bar for the busier drinking times. But people will book tables 4 and 8.30 through the app. These people usually will just order a side of chips for a single starter as our requirement is ordering food to book a table but no minimum amount of food. Sorry rant over just had to get it off my chest. Anyone else have similar issues at web at work? Edit. Formatting minus as soon as it posted I noticed it. Do you have sushi or do you only have wats on the menu? Why yes. Karen. We do only have wats on the fucking menu. What kind of dumb question is that? We don't sell sushi here because we're a ramen house. We have some non ramen appetizers such as ajedashi tofu, edamon, Japanese beef rice bowl, gyozas, tempura, etc. But we don't have sushi. 
if you want sushi go to the actual sushi restaurant just a few doors down. And no, we don't have rice noodles either. Not only are rice noodles not Japanese, but it's not ramen if you use rice noodles. And tempura is literally deep fried food, usually seafood and vegetables. So I don't think you even know the meaning of tempura if you said you wanted tempura, but you don't want it fried. Shift lead refuses to see sense. Manager has my back and the funniest response. So, my work's management hasn't got the most cohesive view of things. Yesterday, one of our shift leads came up to us and asked if we had space for a large party. I'm a host. I remind her that we had large parties coming in within the next hour, 15 minutes apart. She argues with me that we have space now, so the answer is yes, when I knew these parties wouldn't be out in time to get everyone else in easily. She was a real bitch about it. I go up to my other manager asking his advice on how to seat these parties so I have a plan in place. He looks at me and says the funniest thing I've heard. So, there's two options here. You can freak out, or you can know you're right. Sit back and watch it explode in her face. He then gives me a solid plan, and yes the servers bit and complain to our shift lead. I'm going to miss that manager when I leave next week, and I'm hashtag XB. TLDR, my shift lead wants to bring in more big parties than the scheduled staff could handle. My manager tells me to know him right. Sit back and watch her go down in flames. Mean kids are mean. Originally posted on r forward slash tales from tail, but so glad I found this sub. It being summer vacation, my restaurant is getting lots of younger customers lately. This isn't a problem at all, but I guess it means it attracts both the good and bad. Late last week was my first time taking tables. I've served before, but at this job I do take out and hosting, but now occasionally serve tables too. I had a table of boys who looked between 12 and 14. They seemed pretty nice and I did my best to visit their table often and offer refills, etc. Their bill ended up being about $45 and they paid with a gift card and some cash. When they left, I was at the front doing some hostess stuff and said the normal buy forward slash take care. One of them says enjoy your tip, and they all start laughing as they walk out. I went to the table to clean it and what do I see? A dollar bill and change thrown all on the ground. I don't mind it if they don't have the money to tip, that I can totally understand and give zero heat for. But throwing it on the ground and laughing at me, making me pick it up and mocking me on the way out definitely made for a sad shift. But we really want to sit on the patio. A few weeks ago, had some clear weather. It was in the 80s but in our area, that's considered not that hot. So naturally, most people wanted to sit on the patio. The problem is that it meant the dining room was nearly empty and servers assigned there had few to no tables compared to the busy patio. It was baffling because our patio isn't all that nice. It was still humid and there were bees and mosquitoes from the rain we had earlier. And the way our patio seating is set up, it's away from the restaurant and easy to forget about guests seating there. I was at the host stand that day with another host and a nice couple come in. The next server to seat didn't have any tables at all and it was the perfect opportunity to seat them in her section since patio was busy. But of course, other host equals O. O. Welcome to an LT. Restaurant name and GT. How many will be dining with us this evening? Lady, two but we were wondering if we could sit on the patio. Oh, smile wavers. Oh um, lady, we can sit there, right? Oh, well yes but you may get faster service inside. Lady, but we really want to sit on the patio. Me, it's also nice and cool in the dining room. Oh, okay, if you'll follow me. One of the patio servers walks by and shoots daggers at O as she carrying back empty glasses. The couple is seated and it takes them a little over 10 minutes to even be acknowledged. They didn't look quite as happy as they were at the host stand talking to us. Another family that came in after afterwards and who I sat in the dining room got their drinks and were out before them. I really wanted to tell the couple that we couldn't seat anymore in the patio but our manager wouldn't allow it as long as there was an open table left even though the servers there were overwhelmed. How my sister orders at a restaurant. 700 to $200. On mobile. Pissed off. 
so don't be a grammar bitch tl forward slash drive bottom. I work at a restaurant that started out as tip pool because one owner liked it that way. That owner is gone now. However tip pool continues. Many a server has left because of said tip pool. They feel they aren't making enough money. I have stayed. I believe in the restaurant and I think it's a great place to work. Then came Saturday. Saturday broke me. I had a 21 table section. Crazy. Yes. Doable. Sure. My manager, who is newer, stepped up and helped out a ton. Now our restaurant takes the tips from the servers and bartenders and put it all together then tips out support stuff and divides the rest equally between the waiters and bartenders. At this point in time we only have two waiters. That's it. So this fateful Saturday it's me, my fellow waiter, and the two bartenders. I'm running around like crazy busting my ass since 10 am. My fellow server didn't have to come in till 4. He shows up at 430. Whatever. No big deal. I'm still running around with a 21 table section. Q 9 pm. My fellow server can't handle his 10 table section and asks me to help him. Sure. Why not? It's all the same money. This dude played me. He asked me to take that table so he could leave early. I know for a fact he did nothing all day. Fuck you. I had to close. Fine whatever no big deal. He was so excited he brought in 400. I think cool that's a decent amount of money I do my numbers at the end of the night. I made over $700. Awesome my share of tips will be great. I'm super excited. Next morning I'm happy. Can't wait to go into work and see how much I actually made. Has to be around 400 maybe 300. Fine. Tip share isn't my ideal but it is what it is. Spoiler alert. I made 200. On credit tips. That will be taxed. Plus $40 cash. That I still get taxed on fuck tip share. Fuck it. TL forward slash drive busted my ass on a double made over 700 watt with 200. It's so cold in here. I must drink three rounds of iced water. Our three top walked in and I showed them to a table that I'm guessing they didn't like because it was quite a noisy area with children and big parties nearby. We were filling up pretty quickly and I did have other tables available but I decided to not use them as they were the important ones where you can join them up if a big party walks in. For those important ones I put a reservation sign on them. It took these three guests like five minutes to actually settle down properly as they kept looking around trying to see if there was another table for them. They asked me if they could move because it was too cold. I pointed at the reservation signs and said sorry but our tables are limited. I agreed to turn off the air con, which was on 22 degrees Celsius, and I even turned off the ventilation, as that lets out a breeze too. One guy kept his jacket on whereas the other two lady took off their outer wear, and then ordered water, with ice. Halfway into their meal they complained to another waitress that it was still very cold, and then asks for more iced water. What? Funnily enough when the noisy tables left and the restaurant was quietened down again, they stopped mentioning the coldness, had a final third round of iced water, which was free because tap water is free in UK, then didn't pay the optional percent service charge at the end. Thank you, please don't come back, bye.